Okay, so I'm gonna go back there again. Gonna get up. I'll be one second. Here. Right with you. I don't think they'll like that too much. No, ask him. Uh, I will. Okay. But I mean, I know they won't. But well, we don't I know, I know, I know. I know. Okay, 3-8 and Nelson, right? Yeah. There's a sign right there, go west. Just be careful because there may be a lot of turns. Uh, would be this. What are the chances of this virus mutating into something 
that, that would be worse? Or is it just like any other flu? It's a, a case of shingles as the virus comes out again. Uh, but if, if it's not, it's something that you would deal with uh, at the time. In terms of the interaction with other viruses, at the time of infection, because of the effect on the immune system, sometimes you get, as we were talking earlier, a secondary pneumonia, like a bacterial pneumonia. Uh, sometimes, um, certainly in, in previous pandemics, sometimes you'd see uh, co what we call co-infection and other infection with another virus at the same time that, that makes it more difficult for the person. But again, you would deal with that if you saw it, uh, basically. Uh, in terms of long-term effects, there isn't actually a lot of good research to understand what from the infection, uh, if there are any long-term effects to that, the majority of us will recover, uh, you know, just well, they've had the flu. The one thing, though, is, as I was mentioning earlier in the show, Guillain-Barre syndrome, after outbreaks of influenza, you do sometimes, because it's an autoimmune type of loss phenomenon, so it doesn't happen right away, it happens much later, but after um, having had influenza, um, a small percentage, somewhere between 30 and 80 per million of us, not a lot, but uh, when you have a lot of people infected, you, you, do some, you will see some cases of Guillain-Barre, and that, what that is, is uh, we call it ascending paralysis, in other words, you get weakness in the legs and it moves up. So, so something like that, if you have symptoms where suddenly you're getting weakness, etc., it's important to get it checked out. Very rare, as I'd say, but something not to be ignored. But, uh, uh, you know, shingles is far more common than, and I'm just wondering if a flu virus can trigger a latent virus like the, uh, the chicken pox, which a lot of us carry. I, uh, I read Oliver Sacks' book, uh, Awakening, Awakening, and he was saying that uh, this epidemic of neurological condition is much more mysterious. Indeed, my experience church as worship. But I went from that finally into what I'm in now. I believe God is real, and I believe that the Christian life is a journey into the reality of God. I don't believe there's a roadmap, but I don't believe there are boundaries. And I think the job of the Christian church is to transform the world so that everybody in that world has a better chance to live and to love and to be. And the more deep you live and love and be, the more I think you experience what I think is the reality of God. You, you acknowledge, though, that you are moving into a realm beyond words. Yes. What you're talking about does not lend itself very freely to a, a nuts and bolts description. Um, do you bring people along on that journey? You can't wrap it up and tie it up with a bow. You can't say, true. here's what I believe. It, How about it? It demands an awful lot of human maturity, and the church really doesn't like maturity. Now, that's why the Christian church always wants you to be born again, so you can be a child all over again. If you get born again enough times, you never have to grow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it takes an enormous amount of maturity to be Christian. I think it takes an enormous amount of maturity just to be human. Okay, the coffee house on the right. Well, that's easy. Go turn the power off. I won't. <laughs>